please save your booze for the end. The tech giant Microsoft, I know, I know, I know, I know, evil. Uh, but they have just announced that they are launching their decentralized open source identification network that they are calling ION. And it is actually open source and it is running as a second layer over Bitcoin's blockchain. This is a second layer solution on top of the Bitcoin network, right? Now, this technology is going to aim to provide you, the user, probably not you, because if you're watching this channel, you're probably not going to use this. You're probably filling up the comment section right now with how evil Microsoft is and how dare I talk about Microsoft right now, but it's aimed to provide you, the user, with the ability to create a decentralized digital identity, a digital credential, right? That you can use to, it's like a driver's license, university, diplomas, or even, again, yes, here we go, digital immunity certificates, which could be used to accurately identify individuals online. Alternatively, these digital credentials can be used to log into websites or applications that, uh, that uh, support the credential system, right? So very similar to any kind of signature system rather than relying on third-party system providers that most of you are probably already using right now, such as logging in with Facebook or Google into websites, and guess who uh, owns your uh, login credentials and uh, and has the ability to administratively manage your profile? Google and Facebook. Yeah, that's right. All right, so this is a decentralized uh, alternative to that. Now, Ion, of course, can be used for many different use cases, but with, obviously, the impetus for developing this now, or at least the reason why they say that it's being developed right now, is the continued spread of the coronavirus outbreak, right? Meaning this technology has been geared toward health certificates and for contact tracing purposes that we keep hearing so much in the news about, all right? Let's go to our second link for this story. Now, this is the official announcement from Microsoft, and they are calling these uh, little doodads, these little credentials, decentralized identifiers or DIDs, uh, and explains how their decentralized nature, according to them, ensures that users are going to have control over their own data, right? This is not administratively controlled, right? We see this starting off with a quote from Daniel Buckner. He's one of the team members and developers in the SideTree protocol, talking about pretty happy uh, how he is happy about this. Been work in a long time for the making. And he gives, you know, they give credit here. They give credit here to Bitcoin. The inception of Bitcoin a decade ago reinvigorated cryptographers, computer scientists, and distributed systems engineers with new optimism about the possibility of decentralizing many aspects of digital life. A subset of these folks who also participate in the identity community began working on the problem of decentralized identity. Their efforts are starting to take shape as we've explored ideas and approaches to the underlying technical problems in groups. As decentralized identity gained momentum over the next few years, what started as optimism and ideas evolved into something many believe can shift ownership and control of identity and personal data back to individuals. Now, uh, I will say that a decentralized alternative to storing my identity that allows me to log into websites and manage applications, especially if it gets widespread adopted, is a better alternative than allowing yourself to be logging in with your Google account and Facebook account. If you're doing things like that, you have really no idea how widely you are uh, you know, just 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 uh, abrogating any kind of online privacy or anonymity that you are trying to build for yourself, uh, because Google, Facebook sees exactly what profiles you're logging into and everything that you're doing. Doesn't matter if you use a VPN because you've already involved your digital identity that is tied with something else. Of course, you can of course make burner Google accounts. Always recommended, uh, but still, uh, it is you know digital identity or digital privacy is not as simple as VPN advertisements would have you believe. It's just not as simple as turning on a VPN and now you're private. You're not. There are so many other layers of communication that are occurring between you and the uh, the access portal that um, you really need to take a comprehensive approach if you want to be anonymous. And for most users, that's not going to be necessary. They're not going to want to do that anyways. Um, you know, obviously there are going to be power users and privacy advocates that are going to want to and want that option. But uh, I want to point out here that there are a lot of uh, current blockchain projects that are attempting to solve this very same problem of digital identity. And this is one, right? Being able to uh, have some form of decentralized uh, blockchain where, or some form of protocol where you can access, store, create, and manage your own uh, user credentials, right? Uh, and this essentially would allow you to verify your identity without giving up any personal data that, that you don't want to um, anywhere, right? It's just verified with the protocol. Now, we're going to have to look into the, the, the nitty gritty of this. And so far, I haven't heard anything rampantly negative about this. It's on GitHub. It's open source. You can review the code. It's going to run on Bitcoin. So this is going to get a lot of hate, obviously, because it's coming from Microsoft. But I just want to point out, um, you know, kind of the haters out there. 
Do you use Linux? Do you know that Microsoft finances the vast majority of Linux kernel development? Yes, Microsoft funds many, many, many open source projects because it keeps their developers happy. And this is how we actually get the majority of development and funding in our open source projects. So while we may not, um, uh, you know, unfortunately, a lot of viewers are just going to associate the word Microsoft and any project that they create with like the negative aspects of what can come out or probably Bill Gates and their dislike of him and vaccines. But not everything that comes out of Microsoft is bad. Whether this is good or bad, I don't know. But for example, Blockstack, which is a project that I quite like. I had the pleasure to sit down with Jude Nelson at San Francisco Blockchain Week. He actually did the intro for today's video, and you guys can check out our interview on our cryptocurrency uh, playlist. But, uh, you know, Web 3.0, Blockstack is attempting to build Web 3.0. They're doing a very good job of it. And it has that kind of same concept, right, where you create one digital identity that's verified with the Blockstack network, and you're able to log into all, all, all websites on the Blockstack network which is very convenient, right? This has been a problem for a long time. This is a huge problem that we have every single different website. You have your own username and password. You got to use a password manager. That's the central point of failure. And you got to back that up. And you got a second point of failure. And uh, yeah, it's just inefficient, right? One digital identity that is as anonymous and private as an individual can possibly make it. Take control back from the platforms. Take your identity back from the platforms and be able to browse just with proving that you are who you are through your digital certificate, right? So these DIDs, <laughs> more like DI don'ts, yeah, are a new type of identifier that enables verifiable and decentralized digital identity, right? A DID is defined as being able to identify any subject, like a person, an organization, an object, a data model, or an abstract entity, yeah, kind of like a Kind of like some of the CC staff members. Uh, anything that the controller of the DID decides to want to have identified, right? Now, later on in this article, uh, Buckner will go on to describe ION as being designed from the ground up to operate independently of centralized parties or trusted intermediaries, including Microsoft itself. And because of that, the network doesn't rely on any special utility token. So there's no ICO scam here. Go, go you. There's no trusted validator nodes, avoiding the Hive scam, or any additional consensus mechanisms. Because, as he explains, Bitcoin's linear block chrono chronology is the only consensus ION requires to operate. So they're going just off of the blockchain of Bitcoin, right? And the private keys for your digital identity here are never going to leave your hands. All ION operations are signed locally on your device. So uh, because they're signed locally on your device, you do have some assurance that only you the user can modify the state of your digital of your DID, no matter how you choose to interact with the ION network, right? And they they are going to be rolling out or have rolled out the public test net, so ION users can start creating their own DIDs and authenticating their login to sites, apps, and services that do support the uh, the standard. It's called OpenID self issued DID is the is the standard. And additionally, enterprise applications are going to be made possible. So companies. Other organizations could use ION to issue digital credentials for their employees, for their, you know, for their contractors. And, you know, so kind of looking ahead on the roadmap for ION, right? They do plan, obviously, as all small communities want to do, grow the network's community, gather feedback, contributions, which includes exploring new use cases, as well as sponsoring hackathons, right? So this is this is good. I like to see this. I like to see uh, you know, well-funded, but DIY and community-driven initiatives and projects, right? With GitHubs, public repos, and the ability to contribute and make the make the network greater. I don't like privatized, centralized things, but again, one of the reasons why those can be better out of the box is because they're well-funded, right? So you can track the project's progress by checking the GitHub repo for the side tree and ION project. The final version is going to be launched by the fall of 2020. Looking at our last link here, this ION project is just one of the initiatives that's coming out of the Decentralized Identity Foundation. And the DIF has some pretty big industry players coming together. And granted, uh, their kind of stated goal is to fast track identity tools that anyone could use and their current use cases for the COVID-19 crisis response program, right? One of the big things that governments around the world keep mouth breathing on is contact tracing. There's no way to do this effectively. Although this would be a better way to do it, I do not think that this is going to be rolled out in time or receive enough adoption to make that any more viable, which means to me, the idea of contact tracing is absolutely insane. It's not going to work. You know, almost every group, I wouldn't say almost every group, but there are many, many groups in the blockchain industry scrambling to come up with use cases, right? Um, you know, for, for digital identities, right? Whether that be partnerships with government agencies, that's you know want to replace the whole key card mechanism 
of identity verification uh, or, again, for some sort of contact tracing and to track the spread of infectious diseases, which seems, again, far more unrealistic to me. Uh, the, the invasiveness of, of what would be required to pull that off with any degree of efficiency is absolutely ridiculous. There are, of course, I'm certain, uh, and according to the founder of the DIF, conversations going on with governments, but nothing, no agreements have yet been reached. But developers are moving pretty fast. Projects are jockeying for position to demonstrate to basically any investor, but certainly government authorities out there, that this technology can be powerful at serving the, their identity needs, which is not a bad step forward for decentralization if you do believe in the two-line track that decentralization can be embraced by governments. <clears throat> I doubt it, but maybe, maybe. Maybe some people are more positive than me. And of course, right, the race is on. In recent months, for companies to develop any kind of solutions for high-tech emergency ID measures, because that seems to be a sudden need by governments around the world now. But here's the hot take. There's going to be pushback from people who view this technology as controversial or even dangerous, right? Uh, in May, if you'll recall, Elizabeth uh, Ranieris resigned from her advisory role at ID2020. Uh, that was a consortium for DID creators saying she could not be part of an organization overly influenced by commercial interests that only pays lip service to human rights, right? Uh, Harry Halpin, CEO of the privacy startup NIM, said that some of these efforts are simply repackaging previous work, describing ID2020 as just the latest attempt to violate people's privacy using feel-good rhetoric, right? And according to the latter, ID2020 is just part of a larger business plan of Microsoft and IBM and their ambition to build identity systems that will underpin our future societies. Governments will be eager to establish the identities of who owns these keys, while making these next generation ID systems mandatory, all the while using terms like open standard and decentralized to describe them and really run cover for what is a privacy smashing scheme, right? Or as the skeptical Zcash developer Henry De Valens remarked, uh, that it was the duty of technologists to ask what types of systems we're creating and what kind of social structures do these things create? There are certainly, certainly positive ways that this technology can be spun and very negative ways that this technology can be spun. And again, I do want to echo again what uh, that Zcash developer said. Um, it's really up to us. It's really up to technologists and developers and users of platforms to be active and initiate in which direction these things go and what societies these things create. So let me know your guys' comments down below controversial topic. We get a lot of comments whenever we cover anything that Microsoft does, but I appreciated you guys' comments from the last one where we covered the, um, the kind of body motion uh, cryptocurrency generation system. Uh, you know, enjoyed your thoughts on that. This is certainly a run-up to that. Do you feel that this is, you know, overall benign? This is a good thing. Uh, you know, echoing back to my arguments of, you know, it sucks that you got to log in for every single website. And that is a, that right there is a huge bash against privacy and, and anonymity. Or do you feel that uh, this is dangerous and that, and that it's inevitable to build technologies like these that do not facilitate and foster private uh, social systems and less private interactions with the private individual, sovereign individual and in government?